Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here, and this is the review of the Gigabyte Sabre 15. This is not a particularly well-known laptop, but it's in that $1,000 gaming laptop market, and I think it's pretty interesting. So, this is one of the first laptops at this price point that I've reviewed that didn't have some kind of color accent on it, like there's no red, there's no orange, it's all black, inside and outside. There's still some edges, and it's got a bit of an angular design, but there's nothing obnoxious about this laptop. I like that. The build quality on this thing is decent. It could be better. The top panel has a bit more flex than I'd like. Chassis has some flex, nothing out of the ordinary. The keyboard deck itself is sturdy when you're typing and the hinge also seems to be good. As a whole, it doesn't feel delicate, but I wouldn't want to drop this laptop. The other thing is it's got a matte finish, so fingerprints show pretty readily on this thing. There's a good selection of ports. There's ethernet, three display outputs, an SD card slot, four USB ports, one of them being 3.1 type C, and lastly, some audio jacks. I don't like how the ports on the right are clustered on the bottom. If you're right-handed and you're all connected up, it can get a little jungly down there. I like the keyboard a lot. Part of it is the backlighting. The base model comes with a white backlight. The upgraded models have RGB backlighting that's controllable in three zones. Not individually lit, but it's a nice spectrum to choose from. And honestly, it's just nice to have options that aren't red. Now, I might be laying it a little thick with the whole like, I don't like red thing, but seriously, every single gaming laptop at this price point has red on it. This is so refreshing to see. Okay, the keyboard is also nice to type on. Layout isn't bad, it has a two millimeter stroke, more than most laptop keyboards, but I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. Mechanism feels a little soft, but I like it overall. The trackpad, it's a plastic surface, feels smooth, and because it uses Windows drivers, the accuracy and gesture controls are great. It uses dedicated physical buttons, and I like them. Not everyone likes physical buttons, but they do a good job on these ones. The click feels good, and it's not too loud or anything. Okay, in terms of performance, it's your standard issue KB Lake i7 and GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti combo. And if you want to see detailed benchmarks for this combination, there's a link below. But if you get the 1050 Ti, it's a device that'll get you really solid frame rates on most AAA titles. Light to moderate demanding games like Overwatch and Doom will break 60 frames per second on ultra graphics. Heavier games like Battlefield 1 will be in the mid to high 50s on high graphics. It still looks really good though. The heaviest games like Watch Dogs 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Witcher 3, those need the graphics to be on medium to get really smooth frame rates. But for the price, this has great performance. The screen is an IPS panel, 1080p. Bezels aren't too thick. Viewing angles are also pretty good. It could get a little brighter though. This is just bright enough for me at work, and if you bring this outdoors, it'll be tough to see the screen. Color gamut and accuracy aren't the best, but it's on par for a laptop at this price point. 720p webcam looks pretty average. Opening the device up involves removing a bunch of screws, including some in the battery area. Inside, you can upgrade or replace the RAM sticks. They've included one stick of 16 gigs, and you also have access to both drive bays. The included SSD in this unit uses a SATA interface, but it does support NVMe drives. The 47 watt hour battery is removable. I'm actually surprised that this thing packs 47 watt hours. It's not very big. The obvious advantage is that you can swap out batteries if you purchase spares. It feels like something from the 1990s, but for the right user, this can be super useful. Battery life is short. You're looking at around three and a half, four hours of regular use with the screen at max brightness. Playing games, it's gonna be less than an hour. The single heat pipes that they use aren't my favorite. And for the GPU, the heat needs to travel quite a bit before it gets to the fins to cool down. Now, when I play games, I don't notice any kind of throttling. I literally played four hours of Overwatch one night and it didn't skip a beat, but it gets hot. GPU temperatures in game can get to around 85 degrees, but on extended stress tests, it's closer to 90 degrees. External temperatures are fine. Even the warmer GPU doesn't make that part of the laptop uncomfortable. Fan noise is moderately controllable through their software. With performance mode, fans kick in frequently on idle. It's noticeable, but not too loud. And then on full load, the fans get a bit louder. The speakers sound okay, but they're not in a great location. They're facing downwards onto the table and audio clarity isn't great. The volume gets reasonably loud though. Okay, the Sabre 15, it's Gigabyte's entry into that whole $1,000 gaming laptop market. It has a plastic build, decent structural integrity, but the exterior feels a little less sturdy. Screen is about average for the price point of a gaming laptop, slightly more color accurate, but slightly dimmer. 
The keyboard is good. The RGB backlighting is particularly nice at this price. Trackpad and buttons are also both pretty good. Inside, the KB Lake i7 and the GTX 1050 can deliver really strong performance, but the thermal management on the GPU isn't the best. The RAM and the storage are easily upgraded if you need, and there's a user swappable 47 watt hour battery that'll give you a little less than four hours of battery life. So with the Sabre 15, you're paying for a device that doesn't have black and red, which is a win in my books, but you're also getting a device that doesn't have the best thermal management or the best build quality. Now, if you're looking for a device that has this type of look, you won't be disappointed with this. I mean, you're not gonna have the best thermals, but they're pretty good. And I think overall, this device is a great performing laptop. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.